What is the only part of a Highline rig that isn't redundant? And what do you need to know about it? Check it out on this episode of How Not to Highline. I'm Ryan Jinks and welcome to my garage. Today we're going to talk about leashes and the things you need to know about them. No, 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 not those leashes, these leashes. No, seriously, the leash is what connects you to your high line, in case you didn't know that. But something that may not be obvious is that you do not connect your leash to that line with a carabiner. Instead, use a ring. No, 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 not that kind of ring, this kind of ring. So here's another feature of learn from my mistakes. Back in 2006, when I rigged my first high line, I didn't know shit. The only thing available to me was Dean Potter's Highline videos. So I made a leash with a spare sling, which you should never do. And please ignore my backup here because I didn't know the backup line went under the main line. And please ignore the string of quick draws that attached me to that backup line while cross-loading the carabiners. We'll cover all of that in another video. But for now, I just want to show you that I'm clipped to the main line with a single carabiner. But don't worry, it was a locking carabiner, but I forgot to lock it. And after a violent whip off that line, I looked up and saw that my carabiner was only holding me because the notch got stuck on the webbing. So the moral of the story is to never use a carabiner. Instead, use rings. They never come off and they can be pulled in all directions. So let's go over basic leash anatomy. So the industry standard is to have a 9.9 millimeter dynamic rope inside of 11 16 tubular webbing tied to a ring or two of them with extra padding at the ring. And this particular model who volunteered for us today happens to be a circumcised male. So now let's go into excruciating detail on what kind of rings you can use on your high lines. There are big rings, small rings, medium rings, steel rings, aluminum rings, titanium rings, and removable rings. So I try to make this more of a tutorial than a gear review, but you should know your options of what rings you can use on a high line. Because you shouldn't use a carabiner. Have I mentioned that yet? Without trying to bore you with ring details, let's go over some of the pros and cons of each one. So a benefit to a big ring is that they'll slip over a web lock for when you forgot to put on your leash after you rigged it. But the downside is they're heavier, so people generally only use one like I've done here, which isn't technically redundant. And then there's a variation of large rings called bomber rings. And they can be as strong as 150 kilonewtons, which is completely overkill for a highline leash ring, when I would much rather have two medium-sized rings for the redundancy. The main purpose for bobber rings is that it's used for things like space lines, where it's got a lot of force being pulled on it, rather than a highline leash ring. And here we have medium rings, where the industry standard is to put two of them together, making it redundant, and provides a greater surface area to disperse the force of your whip over that highline. So you can walk your high line with your two rings loose, but if you don't like the jingle bells, you can put a piece of electric tape down the middle of both of them. And this is how any high line kit that you buy is gonna come, treating it as one single ring when you walk. However, the downside to using two rings is it's a bit heavier. And then we have small rings, which make sure you use two of them for redundancy. The benefit is that they're gonna be lighter, but the downside is that they may not slide as good on a high line when you walk with them. I personally do not own or have ever used, or have ever seen anybody use, small high line rings. Generally, small rings are just used as line lockers, but the kind that land cruising sells is drop forged, and therefore you could use them for a high line. But I think they would be too small to slide across the line when you're walking. If super lightweight is your goal, you could get a medium sized ring in titanium for only 60 bucks a piece. So if I don't own small Highline rings, what are these? These are rappel rings. Never, never use rappel rings for your Highline. These rolled aluminum rappel rings won't hold you if you took a violent whip on these things. And you don't want a welded rappel ring because there could be a burr that damages your Highline or you could have less strength. You want a drop forged Highline ring from a Highline store. Here's a big, medium, and small ring for a size comparison. Please note that the small ring here is 40 millimeters and the one that Land Cruising sells is 46 millimeters. And lastly, we have removable rings. This is a super clever solution from Slack Eno for when you want to put a leash on a line that's already been rigged. You just slip the removable ring over your two webbings and the special figure eight keeps it from coming off. There's two rings welded together, so it's naturally going to be heavy. Obviously, the benefit to these rings is that you can slip them on and off of lines you've already got rigged, but the downside is not if you have a rope backup. 
The best use of these rings that I can think of is for Highline Festivals where you may not have access to a ring or it's on the wrong side when you want to Highline. So they're a super clever, super heavy leash ring with limited benefits. For all my analytical viewers out there, I've made this chart of all the rings that we've discussed and I'll put a copy of it in the description below. In case you have an experimental phase in your highlining journey and try dumbass experiments like I did, this is not a leash ring. Correct, this will not fall off the line until it cuts it. After aggressively testing it on my highline, brilliant, right? It cut halfway through my leash in five seconds. It causes damage to your leash and your highline, the two things that hold you. But it was super nice to walk with because it was super light and felt almost like a free solo would. Except, I might as well have been. Just to make sure we're clear, webbing on webbing is bad. Make sure you have a real ring, or two of them, on your high line when you walk. Now let's talk about leashes. The only component that is truly not redundant in your high line rig. Industry standard is to have a 9.9 millimeter dynamic rope threaded inside of an 11 16 tubular webbing. The climbing rope is threaded through tubular webbing for the same reasons we use condoms, to make us think that we're safe. No, seriously, it gives abrasion protection for the rope, it makes climbing the leash a little bit easier, and also untying is a bit easier with a threaded leash. This old climbing leash has lots of abrasion, but the climbing rope inside still looks brand new. Just like threading 9 16 tubular webbing inside of one inch tubular webbing isn't a backup for a high line. Likewise, I don't consider this tubular webbing here to be a redundancy in your leash because it's all one single component. But if something were to happen to your one single leash or you were to fuck up on a single tie-in, you're gonna die. You can purchase these kinds of leashes at Balance Community, Slack Tech, or Land Cruising. They come in 12 foot lengths and after you tie a figure eight to the ring and a figure eight to yourself, you have about six feet between the two. And this is plenty long for any highlighting because you're gonna tie in about five feet away from your rings. And there is a more burly highline leash out there from Balance or Slacklines called the Rasta Highline Leash. And it is an 11 millimeter dynamic rope threaded through one inch tubular. I've never tried using it, but it seems like it'd be awfully burly. You have a much higher chance of dying from not tying into your leash properly than your leash being 1.1 millimeters skinnier. But if you are looking for that super bomber leash, they've got it. And in my experimental phase of high aligning, I did create a double leash. It's where I took two 8mm dynamic ropes, threaded it through one inch tubular, and tied a knot halfway down so they would stay together. And then you would have two strands coming out of the bottom of the tubular webbing so you could tie in twice. Balance Community also tinkered with this idea, but it never did come out on the market. This truly would make for a redundant system, but I got so much shit for the two ropes possibly rubbing inside of that tubular webbing that I just stopped using it. However, when I dismantled my leash, I saw no wear and tear after two years of use. So now it's time to tie a figure eight. If you don't know how to tie a figure eight, please don't learn it from a guy in his garage filming a YouTube video. Instead, go to a local climbing gym where you can learn it safely on the ground. So the big idea behind it is that you go around and instead of doing an overhand knot, you just go around one additional time, creating a figure eight. Now the trick is how to get that loop on this ring. What you do to make half the figure eight is you twist it, and if you were to go in too soon, it would look like a basic overhand knot. Instead, when you twist it, you should twist it one additional time and then stick the rope through, creating what looks like a figure eight. Notice our additional padding is on the short end of the first half of the figure eight knot. You slide the padding down and then slide the tail through the ring. So then we take this tail and trace the knot so every strand is parallel with the original half of the figure eight. Then you dress your knot, making sure that all the strands aren't crossing each other in any weird way, and it's not twisted, and you tighten it up. And you should have enough tail when you're done to go around up towards the knot, and then back down the long side of the rope, creating a backup knot. Make sure you pull your knot nice and snug to make sure it's safe, but you don't want it rock hard like what happens after a bunch of whips, because it reduces the strength of your rope. Make sure that you massage it and loosen it back up to where it's still snug and safe, but not rock hard. Be sure to add a few extra turns on the loop of your figure eight for the removable ring, because that's what keeps it from falling off. So lastly, let's go over why our ropes look circumcised. Well, the rope stretches at a different rate than the tubular webbing, and after enough whips, they start to look like this. 
So you have three options to fix it. Option one, don't fix it. There's nothing wrong with it. And option two is to freshly cut the leash and melt it with a lighter so it doesn't fray but it will probably extend again. And your third option, which I strongly discourage, is to cut a fresh end off your rope and dip it in formic acid. If you use formic acid, make sure you use safety glasses, safety gloves, and a respirator. First, cut a fresh end of the rope off. I like to cut it at a little bit of an angle so it makes it a little bit easier to tie in later. Be careful when you open up the formic acid because it'll ruin anything it gets on. And now just put the tip of the leash in about 10 millimeters or so. Remember, if you shove it in too deep, it could get messy. And now set it back down on the paper towel because it can take hours to dry. Don't forget to put the lid back on your formic acid. And after a couple hours, it's all dry and as hard as plastic. And the two materials are fully melted together. I strongly discourage using this, not only because it's hazardous to your health, but because if you accidentally got it anywhere else on your line and were too cheap to buy a new one, you're probably gonna die. Congratulations, you just watched a 12 minute video about a 12 foot rope. We went into excruciating detail on your ring options, how to tie that leash to that ring, and how to maintain the end of your leash. To watch how to actually use a leash on a high line, keep your eye out for our next video. Leashes aren't redundant, therefore you shouldn't high line. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks and this was another episode of the How Not to High Line series. These videos are for slackliners transitioning into highlining. We're not here to spoon feed the right rigging techniques. Instead, we hope to empower slackers to critically analyze any system they're gonna use. Risk awareness can keep people alive. Please don't go rig your first highline without going with someone who knows what they're doing. We have too many wonderful and generous people in our highlining community that you can go with before you go risk your life after watching a YouTube tutorial. Let's keep the sport safe. And remember, no system is perfect. Therefore, you shouldn't highline. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.